Today we're going to learn about column elution. We've already talked about equilibrating the column, loading the sample to the column, and the final step is eluding the column. So um, today, oh excuse me. So today again we're doing the elution, and next time we're going to do some activity assays. We're also going to pool the fractions, and pooling the fractions means that we have the protein of interest that we want, but it's going to be spread out within maybe five or six, maybe eight fractions. We put those fractions together, and we actually concentrate the protein, and we'll talk about a little bit about that next week. So <clears throat> the goal today would be to learn uh, the elute, how to elute molecules from an ion exchange column using the pH or salt gradient. And uh, the gradients are, uh, you have two types of gradients that you can work with. You can either work with a stepwise gradient or a linear gradient. And the difference between the stepwise and linear gradient is the step uses maybe three or four different concentrations of which they're eluding with. And the linear gradient uses a progressive uh, linear concentration that the proteins are, of interest are eluded from. So <clears throat> today we're going to learn how to set up that linear gradient. And um, with, uh, we're going to use a gradient maker to do so. And um, it provides a greater discrimination in the elution profile, meaning that you can separate uh, more of these proteins with a, a linear gradient more so than a stepwise gradient. And we're also going to learn how to properly use a fraction collector, which is going to, um, you see on the benches now. They're used to actually collect these uh, fractions. So. These molecules are going to be eluded off of, based off of their overall charge. And um, so what you see here is a depiction of an ion, <coughs> a typical ion exchange column and the proteins which are bound in the column. So at the top, you see the proteins of high, more highly charged molecules are more tightly bound. So <clears throat> they're going to be here at the top of the column, but not necessarily. They, they, they won't necessarily be all located at this very top. So, uh, and then you have other proteins which are moderately charged, and so they interchangeably equilibrate between being bound to the resin or flowing with the mobile phase, which is going to be the buffer. So, and then you have less charged molecules, which bind less strongly to the beads, and they more readily diffuse within the buffer and flow out of the column first. So, <clears throat> this is the general... Um, um, mechanism of which we're going to be studying today. So <clears throat> the elution strategy number one is the step gradient. So the step gradient as I mentioned would be uh, uh, two, three, maybe four different concentrations that you could choose of whatever type of elution that you're doing, either salt or pH, which both of them take advantage like we talked about last time of the same uh, chemical properties. Uh, the stepwise gradient is fast, it's simple, but it's not very discriminating, meaning that you won't get a very good separation of these proteins. So <clears throat> it usually causes most of the proteins to be eluded at once. At some particular concentration, most of the proteins are going to come off. So here you see this. Uh, they had a low salt, then they used uh, an intermediate salt concentration, and then a high salt concentration. So... Um, and, and this, this is commonly used in a lab if you want to uh, get a quick purification done and you already know where your protein comes off. Um, but if, when you're dealing with samples where you don't know where your protein is going to come off, it's better for you to use the linear gradient. So the linear gradient is um, the buffer composition is changed progressively or gradually. And it's technically more complicated because you have to make this gradient. And, um, but it's far more discriminating, and the, the proteins are eluded off the column based on their charge or PI. So now you can really take advantage of this property. So here's a sample elution profile of a gradient elution. And as you can see here, this <coughs> shows you the progression of the experiment in the equilibration uh, uh, there was no protein in the profile. And then once the sample is injected um, into the actual column, then you start with the gradient elution. So the gradient elution, as you can see, it goes up in a linear fashion up until about, I guess you would say this is about 500 millimolar salt concentration. 
And then in the wash, they wash with high salt to get everything off of the collar. So here is where you can see you can get that separation of proteins with these different peaks. Whereas if this was a stepwise gradient, we would all get we would get all of these proteins all in the same fraction, and that's what we don't want. We want to separate them into different fractions. So, and uh, as you can see, it's uh, better for resolution. So, the gradient elution is going to start with a pH of 3.25 or 5.0, depending on which one you're working with, and 20 millimolar salt concentration. So. We're starting off eluding at what salt concentration? If the buffer, if the if, if we haven't introduced any more salt into the buffer and we want to elute that, what's the concentration of the buffer? We've been working with it. 20 millimolar, remember? 20 millimolar acetate buffer. So you're starting with a 20 millimolar salt concentration and you're moving up to a hopefully, or somewhere close to a 0.5 molar range, 500 millimolar range. So gradually, you're going to mix in the 0.5 molar um, NaCl. And as the solution flows out of the mixing chamber, uh, the equal volume of buffer from the reservoir chamber flows in. So this rapidly dilutes by mixing, and, the gradual inc and it gradually increases the salt concentration of the buffer that you're sending through the column. So this will, in, in, in turn, elute proteins off of the column as the concentration of the buffer salt concentration increases. So the protein that we're working with, RNAs, elutes off at a pH of around 4.1. You won't actually know that this pH is coming up, but it's just for your record. Um, <laughs> if you wanted to, you could check the pH of these samples, but I don't think we're actually going to do that. But we're actually, uh, we, since we already know the properties of this protein, we're just letting you know that it dilutes off at around pH 4.1. So um, this is an example of the um, gradient maker of which we're going to use. So you're going to fill chamber B with the first, I mean, uh, first with 0.5 molar NaCl. So this chamber here is going to have the NaCl. And then you're going to open the valve, which is located in between, to bleed the air up. Because if there's air in the chambers, once you fill the valve up, there may be a little bit of air still in the chambers. So you bleed that air out, close it back up before you start the elution. And then in chamber A, which notices, notice that there's a stirrer under chamber A. And uh, that's what you're going to use to evenly mix this salt, which has now been mixed with the buffer, before it actually enters the column. So... Uh, fill chamber A with pH buffer 3.25 or 5.0, whichever one you're working with, and uh, with a stir bar and put it on the stir plate and begin the stir. So you then connect the pump, connect this to the pump, and then open the valve and start the pump. And then you collect the fraction. So we have an automatic fraction collector on your bench, of which you have the manual um, that you can look at to... Uh, be abreast of how things are going to be going on with that um, fraction collector. The buffer A, uh, you're going to use 250 mils of acetate buffer, pH 3.25 or 5.0, and it must come out first, so put it closest to the outlet. So make sure that your buffer is closest to the column in the chamber and the salt is in the chamber furthest away from the column. Uh, buffer B, 250 mils, uh, 0.5 molar NaCl, uh, first put it in, in the chamber and then bleed the air out and releasing a little so that you make sure that all the air is gone. So the fraction collector, you're going to set it up to collect about a total volume of 450 mils at 8 mils per fraction. And so that will equal up to about 57 um, fractions. Now, um, you'll have tubes of which you need to label. I believe uh, the protocol says for you to label every five tubes. But that may become pretty complicated in, uh, when it, whenever you uh, get your tubes back because you're not going to be the ones actually putting them in the um, test tube um, racks. We are. So in order to <clears throat> stay away from any uh, complications as to what the number tube is, you want to label every tube instead of every five tubes. So there won't be any discrepancy on where tubes are and um, uh, which pool, which uh, tubes to pull to concentrate. So uh, you're going to label the first and the last with your initials, number the tubes 1 through 60, 
and label the actual rack that you're gonna we're gonna later later put these tubes in with your um, workbench and yourself your maybe both you, your partner's uh, initials and make sure the collector is aligned firmly and the knob is turning uh, and um, you should the, the the collector should not move freely if it's properly in place it should be pretty stiff and the only movement that's going the only way it's going to get moved is through the fraction collector you should not be able to move it significantly or at all with your hand so um, the tubing from the column lined up and make sure it's lined up uh, over the tubes there's an arm on the fraction collector of which you place over the tubes and you put your uh, elution tube into that arm and you make sure that it's aligned over the tubes to, to, to drip directly into the, the test tube and after programming um, you push the event button on the fraction collectors and watch to see at least three fractions are coming off properly. You're getting three eight mil fractions. And once you see that you've gotten three fractions good, then you can ask us to come check up your check out your setup and then you can leave. Um, one reminder, the peer reviews. Uh, a lot of people have been doing good on the peer reviews, but some still are uh, giving less than what they should as far as comments. We want you guys to give pretty good comments so that when it comes down to the, the final paper, there you, you have a good uh, sense of what you need. And um, some people are making very few comments. Remember, you're being graded on this. So if you're making very few comments, we don't have much to go off of to give you a decent grade um, <coughs> that can reflect how, how much time you're putting into each other's work. Um, remember to put your name on everything that you submit online. Um, I don't know if we had any problems with um, people not putting their name, but that is important. And um, I believe did everyone turn in their second draft on last Friday? Okay, so um, there should be another draft, I believe, coming up next week. Yeah, next week. So be prepared for that. Um, Peer review this tomorrow. week, tomorrow. Okay, so make sure you guys are up on that. So today you're going to need gloves. They're optional, and the eye protection is optional, but it, if, if you want to use them, by all means, go ahead. If you guys have no other questions, you can go ahead and get started. They have tubes in the back there, extra tubing, <coughs> fraction collectors, and the chambers are on your bench, and you guys already know how to work with the columns.